What's going on guys? In today's video I'm going to show you how you can take any remote control and use it with your home theater PC and control whatever you want on that PC with the remote using an Arduino Nano and a couple lines of code. So let's get started. So to get started we're going to head over to eBay, grab ourselves a cheap Arduino Nano clone. Uh, you can tell it's Chinese because the color here is no welding which means they haven't soldered on these pin headers around the edges here. That's a good thing because we're going to pick up a SM0038, which is this IR receiver module. The pinout's right here. We've got VS, which is going to be 5 volts on the Arduino Nano, ground on the Arduino Nano, and out is going to be hooked up to D2 on the Arduino Nano. So we'll hit the bench, solder it up, and we will come back to the computer and see how to set it up. So instead of soldering it up on the bench, I thought I'd just show you real quick. The signal wire gets bent over to D2, solder that in place, VS to 5 volts, and ground to ground. And that's it. So when I built this one, I kind of wish that I uh, had placed this kind of parallel to the edge here so I could make a nice 3D printed case for that. But that's a topic for another video. So let's just get back into the software and I'll show you how it's done. So we're back on the computer here. We're going to head over to github.com slash advanced newbie slash IR nano L I R C. The link will be in the description below for this. What you're going to want to do is go ahead and clone that to your PC. When you do that, you're going to get the Arduino sketch. Go ahead and open it up in the Arduino IDE. And what you're going to want to do is go to manage libraries here, search for IR remote and install version 3.1.0. After you're done that, go to board and Arduino Nano because that's what we'll be using for this. And remember we put the signal pin on D2 so we got receive pin 2 here and the irman.dll which WinLIRC uses runs at 9600 baud. We send an OK here, I'll explain that. So this serial event here it's going to send the, the WinLIRC is going to send IR and what we're going to look for is this last R in IR and when, whenever we receive that we're going to send an OK on the UART bus. And then in our main loop we got the irreceive.decode which is part of the IR remote library we installed earlier. And what it's going to do is write this header 1E followed by the IR code. And we have a little debounce here, so we we're going to do this uh, twice here. And after 250 milliseconds, uh, when we first press it, we don't want it to press multiple or send multiple codes. So we got this 250 millisecond debounce here. After that, though, when we're holding the button down, we want to rapid fire and give her shit and send as many codes as we can. So I'm going to show you in uh, real term here. I'll fire up real term. And I think I already have this open here, right here. And I'm going to display as hex. Port 29 is the same port that I was using for the Arduino Nano. And we'll display hex. And I've got my trusty WinPC PC remote here. I don't know if you can read that or not. Basically says PC remote, it's a cheap eBay one and I'm going to point it at my receiver here and as you can see every time I hit a button we get 1E, our header, followed by the code. So if I hit a different code here you can see how the code changes every time. So what we're going to do is program WinLIRC to pick up on these codes and we will define each button on the remote you know, power, play, volume up, volume down, whatever. And once we configure WinLIRC for that, we can use it as a client for other programs and set up different actions that WinLIRC is going to send to them. And then we can do whatever we want, shell scripts, uh, turn the volume up and down and everything like that. So I'll show you how to set that up. Basically, we're going to want to go over to sourceforge.net, projects, WinLIRC, and download the latest version of WinLIRC. The link will be in the description for this as well. Once you've downloaded that, you can download it to any folder basically. 
it's standalone. So let's go back here. This is the zip I got. I extracted it. You get winlirc. And this config file I've already created, but I will delete that and show you how to do it from scratch. Basically, fire up winlirc. It'll tell you there is no config file. That's OK, because we're going to create one right now. Failed to initialize. So yes, we're going to change the configuration. Our input plugin is that irman.dll that I mentioned before. And you're just going to want to point it to the directory here and give it a name. I gave it irnanolirc.config. And once you select irman, go to plugin setup. Select that COM port that we had before in the Arduino IDE in real term that I showed you, COM29. And we are going to create config. Once you do this, it'll open up this uh, command prompt here. And it's actually irrecord.exe, which is also in this same directory for the downloads here. And this is just telling you how, what to do here, but I'll, I'll tell you what to do. Hold down an arbitrary button. So we're just going to hold down, I'll hold down the power button here. There was that little debounce at the beginning I was mentioning before. And once you do that, it's kind of got the gap length there. It figured it out. And we are going to enter the name for the next button. So this is the button that we're going to program now. So I'm going to program the power button first. So let's type in power, hit enter. Now hold down the power button. All right. Now the next button I'm going to do is play, and I'm just going to hold down the play button. All right, now let's go vol up, volume up, hold the volume up button, vol down, hold down volume down, let's do stop, hold down stop, and you're going to do this for all the buttons on your remote. Once you're done, hit enter to finish recording. It says right here. And it's going to say, just press an arbitrary button and repeat it as fast as possible. So we're going to hit enter to do that first. And then we're just going to tap a button. You'll see the dots appear. I'm tapping it as fast as I can. And there you go. Window disappears once it's completely uh, configured. And then you're just going to hit OK. And now WinLIRC is running in the tray. So I will move my tray over here so you can actually see it. You'll get this little icon here. It says it's ready. What you're going to want to do is try and press the button and see if it, if it goes green there. If it goes green, you've configured it properly. Hit the play button, volume up, volume down. They're good. So what we're going to do now is set up uh, event ghost. I'll set that up real quick. We'll come back and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we're back and we're going to set up event ghost. So we're going to go to eventghost.net. Go ahead and download it. Once you do and install it, you'll get a window like this. And basically, as you can see, even as I went back and forth, there's Chrome. Um, any, any task that it notices on your PC, you can set up scripts and stuff, and it will, once it gets that task, and once it notices that that event occurred, uh, you can set up different things for it to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a plugin for LIRC. And let's go to the LIRC client, because that's what we set up, the win LIRC. And basically, we're just going to local host this. The uh, local host and the default port should be fine. And let's hit OK. It's connected. As long as this is set up properly and LIRC is running down on the bottom here, uh, everything will be fine here, it says. Now, if we try and hit different buttons, you can see the volume up, volume down. Uh, let's hit the power button. Power. Ooh. It's actually set up to close the program. Let's not do that. Um, so volume up, volume down. Let's, let's make it control and increase, decrease the volume. So volume up, basically we want volume up. We can drag that. And now LIRC volume up will increase the volume on our PC. Let's go volume down, drag that, decrease volume. So let's give it a shot increased master volume. You can see that right there. 
and you can see right here my speaker is actually turning down every time I hit the remote it increases decreases now I don't have mute set up so I can't do that but you get the drift there so uh, you can do anything here start Winamp um, shut down whatever you want you can add a macro here uh, you got different things um, you can do uh, combinations of things so you can find a window go to it and close that window or maximize that window or wh whatever you want to do here so event ghost is really powerful and uh, combined with WinLIRC and a PC remote it's awesome for home theater PCs and I used to uh, watch satellite TV off of my home theater PC this is the way I would control it it was a lot better than you know like um, uh, XBMC and 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 things like that for using their remote systems event ghost was way better it, you could emulate the keyboard you can do whatever you want and truly customize your home theater PC so I really hope that you like this video and stay tuned subscribe and we'll catch you next time thanks